Hmm. Nasa kanya. Kay Flute pa? Ate Lona pa. Good evening po mga doc. Uh, start po natin. Lord, as we begin today, we ask a freshness of your spirit that out of confused issues may come simplicity of plan, that out of fear may come confidence, that out of hurry may come deliberation, that out of frustration may come guidance. Let us get to our work, not head first, but heart first. May we be able to disagree without being disagreeable, to differ without being difficult, to be honest without tension, and frank without offense. In an atmosphere of teen spirit, amen.
Balik ako dito. Okay, yung meeting pa ako. Mabilis na internet dito. Good evening mga Good evening, dok. Um, I-recap lang po natin yung mga napagkasunduan uh, meeting last week. Meetings. Ipa-follow up ko lang yung, ano, yung membership leveling. Bale, hahabol daw si Doc Manuel later kasi siya yung nakatoka doon sa pag ano pag leveling. Uh, ito yung committee, yung membership chairman si Doc Manuel. Tapos yun nga, napag-usapan natin regarding sa Philippine Qualification Framework. And yung mga requirements. Ako yung dapat ng CV namin i-email sa inyo. And then, yeah, ito yung mga members, membership leveling natin na napag-usapan the previous meetings. Tapos yung points. And then yung points guidelines na na-ratify ng mga previous meeting din natin. Okay. Ito yung mga uh, recent, yung mga natapos na nating mga presentation at uh, lectures. Hi, good evening, Brighton, but how may help you? And then tonight. Um, no? Hi, yes. Yes. Ah, uh, no, Joy is not in today. Ah, uh, Joy. Oh, yes, what is it? <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll just I'll check. Okay, po, papakilala ko po, po sa inyo si Doc Ray. Um, from... Joe is on the line. 701. She's on the line. lang ha. Paano ba i-mute yun? Okay na, Doc. Okay na. Okay. Okay po. Um, si Doc Ray, graduate siya ng UPLB, um, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine 2005, and his Master of Science in Veterinary Medicine in 2018. Um, he is the current president of the Veterinary, um, Veterinary Practitioners Association of the Philippines. Currently, also um, an assistant professor, seven, uh, from the Department of Veterinary Sciences in the University of Veterinary College of Veterinary Medicine. His field of specialization is in small animal medicine and veterinary orthopedics. Okay, Doc, the, the, the platform is yours. All right. Uh, good evening, Pa. All right, so I'll just share. All right, my screen. Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, basics and advances in wound management. So some of you may have seen this um, video already or, or this presentation already. So this was presented in Wak Wak way back. I'm not sure kung kailan. Pero I added some information which may be uh, very important, um, especially for us practitioners. Okay, especially for us surgeons. Okay, so we'll just um, do a little background. So the skin is the outermost covering of the skin, oh, of the body, sorry. And it has two layers, yung epidermis and of course the dermis. So yung epidermis is the outer uh, covering. Okay, it provides as a barrier and aids in waterproofing, 
whereas the dermis is the inner layer which contains the blood vessels, the nerves, sensory receptors, sweat glands, basis glands, hair follicles, and fat cells, and fibers. Alright, so, so yun yung skin. And it has seven main functions. So, appreciate lang natin itong magandang skin na yan. Alright, so, um, the seven main functions of the skin would be sensation. Okay, so doon ka nakakadama. Hindi ba sa nadadama ng puso mo? Okay, you also have heat regulation. So, the blood flow as well as the the hair, okay, the erector pili, muscle, okay, and as well as the sweating. Okay, so, nagma-regulate ng heat. Also, absorption of medications, okay? Um, protection, okay? Excretion of of um, sweat, secretion of sebum. Okay, so, sebum na will also aid in the waterproofing of the skin and, of course, in vitamin D production. Now, what is a wound? So, any any wound or a wound is any break in the continuity of the skin or an organ. So, if you look at this, pwedeng yung mga wounds na yun would be because of self-mutilation, neglect, um, surgical procedures, dog bites, accidents, and even your vaccination. So, those are types of wounds. Okay. And commonly, ang tinitingnan talaga natin na mas problematic tayo would be the wounds na malalaki. Okay? Wounds that needed veterinary care. Okay? Wounds that would look like this. And the next question is, paano ba natin mapapa um, tag nito, mapapa galing yung isang sugat na napakalaki, na may problema and how do we make it into a healthy one? And of course, how do we make it fast na mag-heal siya? Okay. So, there are different wounds and each wound would be um, depending on the type. Okay, So, we have wounds according to the origin. So, number one would be mechanical. So, your mechanical type of wound would be because of self-trauma. Okay, pwede yung scratching. Okay, of course, um, pwede rin yung Surgical wounds. So these are examples of mechanical wounds. We also have thermal, uh, thermal wounds, and they can be because of burns. So na na takuna na mainit, okay? O kaya na nakaran na na nadikit sa isang mainit na bagay, or also those that are uh, because of frost bites. Okay, we can have wounds that are because of radiation, especially for those receiving radiation therapy. Because of chemical as well. So, yung mga natapunan ng kung ano-anong chemical that could be causing or could be irritants to the skin. And we also have special wounds that are due to um, snake bites. Okay, so these are types of, or these are special wounds. Now, uh, a wound can also be classified as an open or a closed wound. And for the closed wound, we have two, the contusion, okay, and the abrasion. So, yung contusion or contusion ay because of um, blunt force trauma. So, nabubug siya. Okay. Or, abrasion. So, abrasion naman is because of scraping or friction. So, sa Tagalog naman, gas-gas. Now, the other type is the open wound. Okay. So, open wounds, there is skin penetration. So, there's a breakage talaga of the skin. And, some of this would be your incision. So, your incision are usually are usually slender, straight, and caused by sharp objects, okay, and accompanied by hemorrhage, and they also heal rapidly. So, example would be your surgical wound. Versus la your laceration, your la laceration are usually wounds that are with torn and jagged edges, okay, and with great tissue trauma. So, usually caused by a mobile object on a mobile skin, or pwedeng both are mobile. So, if you for example, um, are presented with a dog na hit by car, most of them will actually have laceration. And also with um, those dogs na presented because of dog bites or dog fights. So those patients usually have lacerated wounds. Alright, you also have puncture. So yung puncture naman would be your deep wounds with small opening caused by pointed objects. So injection site is actually a puncture wound. Uh, more common would be yung mga natusok, actually, so yung mga tumatakbo tapos uh, napaapak sa pako. So those are puncture wounds. Now, to differentiate between a penetrating wound, so the penetrating wound is actually similar to puncture, but it reaches 
a body cavity at a deeper level. So if you look at this picture, siya ay tinamaan ng pana and it has penetrated the thoracic cavity. So swerte siya kasi baka umilag yung puso at yung kanyang baga. So with this one, of course, that is a uh, uh, life-threatening and an emergency case. Now, aside from um, those mentioned earlier, so we also have avulsion or your degloving injury. So this would be uh, partially or fully torn skin. So natuklap mismo yung malat. And these are also common in dog fights and in um, hit by car or vehicular accident patients. Alright, we can also classify wounds and specifically surgical wounds according to contamination. Okay, so we ha can have the clean wound where there is no break in asepsis. So usually, those procedures that require opening and then closing. So pag nag, pag nag open abdominal care without penetrating your, your um, tubular organs, then that would be classified as a clean wound. Versus your clean contaminated wound, there is minimal break in asepsis. It remains uninfected. But there is the opening, okay? Nag-penetrate ka ng tubular organs such as your gastrointestinal tract, your genitourinary tract, and also your respiratory tract. Before you know it, ano na yun? Bayad na yun. Alright. Aside from that, we also have the contaminated wounds. And contaminated wounds would um, have the presence of obvious contamination. Okay. So septic operations... And there is a break in a septic technique. So, yung mga nag opera ng pyometra at nasabugan, okay, kasama siya doon. And also, for those cases that are um, uh, bullet wound um, cases, bullet wound, so no, yung bullet actually has direct contact or um, it touched the skin and then it penetrated okay, the underlying tissues. So, contaminated na siya because the skin is actually filled with contaminants. Then, we also have your dirty, infected, and heavily contaminated wounds where there is the presence of severe um, or gross infection. So, severe septic operation. No, sobrang infected talaga siya. And also, with those cases na contaminated by fecal contents. So, na, for example, if you were performing your... your um, um, intestinal surgical procedures tapos for some unknown reason biglang nag-spill or nag-kumalat yung intestinal contents into the abdominal cavity and that will be now your dirty or infected wound or your heavily contaminated wound. Now, all wounds supposedly would heal. Ano? So the phases of the wound healing would be this three, so inflammatory phase, proliferative phase, and the maturation phase. So just a review for those. Okay. So ito yung mangyayari. Okay. So the injury would happen initially. And of course, the body will have its initial reaction, which is vasoconstriction. Pag nagkasugat, of course, yung sugat na yun should close. And the blood vessels will constrict to stop the bleeding. Okay. So once it's, it stops, or once the bleeding stops, uh, once nagkaroon na ng blood clot, and then there would be now your inflammatory phase. So there would be vasodilation. Okay? Magbe vasodilate siya because of cellular response. Okay? So pupuntahan natin yan. Okay. So vasodilation, and there would be your inflammatory uh, response. So balikan natin. Blood clot to seal the wound and provide a scaffold for cell migration. Okay? And the scab formation to cover the wound. And there is your WBCs to migrate into that area, okay, kung saan meron yung sugat, and of course, to, the, to begin the bride men. Okay, so the bride men would, of course, to remove your um, contaminants and your devitalized tissues. And then there would be epithelial migration within 48 hours. Now, you also have the next phase, which is the proliferative phase, okay? So there is already epithelialization, there is fibroplasia, there is formation of collagen, and there is wound contraction. So in this phase, there is granulation tissue formation, okay? and the, that would be to replace your fibrin plug. And then there is collagen formation, and of course, 
nagko-contract na yung wound. So you'll be seeing that if for example this is your uh, your big wound for example the day 1 letter A okay then it would be smaller okay and of course it would heal until the day 1 sorry uh, letter A day 14 so liliit talaga siya because of the contraction of the wound as well and then after that you also have the maturation phase. So this one would be um, the formation of the scar, the strengthening of the wound, and then there is complete healing. So it depends now on the type of wound, the severity of the wound, and of course the sabi natin yung intrinsic factor of the animal, intrinsic um, uh, kung ano yun sa animal mismo. So if the animal is capable of of wound healing fast. So, depende yon sa tagal din ng pag-heal ng sugat. Now, we also have cases where there is delayed healing. So, yung delayed healing naman, mas matagal of course as compared with the normal cases. And this would be because of this condition. So, infection, foreign body reaction, trauma, okay? Additional trauma because of excessive motion or excessive mutilation, okay, immune dysfunction if the animal is immunocompromised. In cases of glucocorticoid and chemotherapy, so the body will not be able to function well, especially in wound healing. Neoplasia, so neoplasia or the neoplastic conditions also, hindi rin, sila yun din yung mga non-healing wounds, okay. And then if there is tension in the wound, so nagbubukas siya, nagbubukas. If there is hypoproteinemia, okay, a condition of um, the animal, and if there would be nutritional deficiencies. Now, dito tayo papasok. So, the basic checks, checklist for the practitioners. Pasasya na, may narinig kayong mata. Okay, so, we have to assess the patient first and assess the wound. So, that would be your initial management. Right? Then, after that, of course, find education. So, you have to educate first the client on the type of wound that you have. And then, of course, we have to provide the wound management plan. So, your wound management plan is very important not only for the practice, for the veterinary group or team that you have, but also is very important um, to the owner. Kasi, your wound management plan mo, you must have your different, you must have a different one management plan A B C D that would fit dun sa one patient that you have and two budget of the client. Okay, so you have to to somewhat um magko compromise kayo. Okay, and then of course you have to inform the client of that so that pede siyang mago signal, bigyan ng go signal or pede siyang okay ah uh, hindi ko kaya yan so baka may ibang options. Okay, and then you also have to have your anesthetics and a and nutritional plan, your actual wound management, of course, monitoring. So, isa isa yung din natin yan later. Okay, so you are presented now with a patient. So, assess the patient okay, and assess the wound. You can have different um, patients brought to you in different states um, physically. Okay. And of course, um, different states of wound na. Okay, so stabilize the patient if there's a need. So you may have to, to put the animal on IV if needed. You may have to give initial antibiotics. You may have to put the animal on, on medications immediately. Okay, you may need or you have to do your initial physical examination. And then of course, for the wound, you have to examine that wash, clip, and shave as well. And then... Further examination, very important. Okay, so initial examination, anong kailangan gawin? Dot, dot, dot. And then, once na nagawa mo na initial, so further examination. You may need to put the animal on, on sedative or anesthesia if, if necessary. Okay, so initial management tayo. Of course, we have to educate the owner about the plan. Okay, so nabanggit na nga natin, baka go siya or baka hindi siya. Balikan natin to. Okay, so this picture here below, okay, that is an actual patient. So the dog was apparently um, um, run over by a vehicle. Okay, tapos nadala siya three days 
na okay three days after the initial um, incident so this leg actually here is may amoy na siya okay i don't think it's still um, viable so sabi namin sa may ari ito yung gagawin na natin we may need to do amputation in this leg so ito yung mga plans okay but then the the owner said uh, doc hindi mo na namin papagawa papatingin muna natin sa iba. So, for second opinion. So, it's okay. Wala akong problema. Okay? So, that's a part na napagdadaanan natin when it comes to case handling in small animal practice. Okay? So, uh, di ko na alam ko na nangyari sa kanya kasi di naman na siya bumala. Siguro kung napunta siya sa inyo, update me. Okay? Pero this was way back 2009. Okay? So, balik tayo dito. So, client education and then wood management plan. Okay? And then wound management, okay? You have your initial management that could be performed. So, nagawa na natin yan. And then after that, do you need to debride? Do you need to excise? Okay? Do you need to suture? Do you need to add, um, do you need to perform bandaging, dressing, um, or drainage? And then what antibiotics can you give? And what would be your um, CAVM if, if available? So, complementary and alternative veterinary medicine or alternative treatment meron ba applicable ba or not so for the excision and debridement okay so excision is actually trimming of the jagged edges of the wound okay and the debridement would be the removal of foreign material necrotic damage or infected tissues okay bakit nga ba natin gagawin to one of course to to make the healing faster because you are removing the foreign material the necrotic um, material that you have there and the damaged and infected tissues para mabilis mag -heal. Now, why do you trim? Of course, of the same reason. You want to trim off the, the necrotic and the damaged tissues so that mag heal siya mabilis. And at the same time, you want to create a wound that would be um, pag sinabi, pag nag -heal siya, it's a post. And at the same time, pleasing the, then, please, pleasing then, ayaw mo naman siguro na wound na mukha siyang mapa. Okay, but you rather what who would like to have a wound that is as much as possible pag nag-heal siya, medyo linear siya or elliptical man kasi mas mabilis din siyang mag-heal. Alright, so there are different types of debridement and um, yung autolytic is actually the natural process um, by which you have your um, your white blood cells Okay, your phagocytic cells and your proteolytic enzymes um, produced by the body to the bride yung kung ano man yung nandun. So, infl inflammatory cells, for example, would be leasing um, your proteolytic enzymes to, to remove your uh, dead cells. Okay. So, kasama yung nandun. But also, we have your surgical, okay, your mechanical, your biologic, and enzymatic. So, in surgical would be the use of your scalpel and surgical scissors. Okay, to the bride, okay, to remove your necrotic tissues there. So, this would require anesthesia. Um, kahit local, mas okay na rin. Kesa wala, okay. Isipin din natin animal welfare. Okay. Um, gusto nyo ba na kayo pag may natanggal na tissue dyan, eh, wala man lang kahit local anesthetics. So, we also think of animal welfare in these animals. The number, uh, another, another would be mechanical. So, we can have the use of adherent budget, bandages, okay? Um, so, yung adherent bandages mo, uh, pwede ka kasing gumamit ng wet to dry bandage. So, you, you put in wet, you put in the bandage wet, and then once it dries up, pagtanggal mo sa kanya, then the, the necrotic tissues, okay? Makasasama na siya, kasi dry na siya, dumikit na siya dun sa bandage, okay? Um, sometimes contaminated tissues remain after the surgery, okay, and at, after the initial surgery, so you can make use of this mechanical environment as well. Okay? Now, there's also the biologic, gumagamit ng maggots, okay, so larval therapy using the Lucilia sericata. And then there's also this enzymatic, where there is the use of um, enzymes such as papain, so it selectively removes non viable tissues. And it uh, creates fine debridement. And of course, this is indicated in patients with anesthetic risk. So, yung biologic, balikan natin. Biologic um, larval therapy, you cannot use this 
if the wound has um, a connection to um, um, to the abdominal cavities, my body cavities, you cannot use that. You can only use that for uh, topical, okay, for outside wounds. All right. So you have performed your excision and debridement, okay. So do you suture, okay? So there are three types, okay, um, by which you would allow the wound to heal. So you first or your primary intention healing would be your number one. So you close it by suturing. Okay. You can also have it number two. Okay, so you can allow the wound to heal by contraction or epithelialization. So kayaan mo siyang mag-heal on its own without suturing. And then number three, you allow the wound to granulate. Okay. And then you close it with sutures. So your number one, um buntis ay hindi siya buntis. Kakapanganak lang niya ah, so tumalon siya sa may barbed wire na area so sumabit yung kanyang um mammary glands. So we had this is a fresh wound so bago lang, so akadala lang. So we can actually suture. Sinara natin. Okay. For number 2 na infect yung pinagsweruhan. Okay? So with this one, we had to um um, ang ginamit namin dyan would be sugar plus betadine plus nitrofurazone. Okay, so in 3 days time, yun na siyang pangalawang picture. And then in 5 days time, okay na siya. Pwede na siyang umuwi. Okay, so yung wound treatment na yun na gumamit ng sugar, um, betadine, and nitrofurazone. Uh, ginamit kasi yun sa father ko during the time na meron siyang bed sore. Okay, so, ginamit siya ng doctor. So, kaya, kinuha ko lang yung idea. Okay, it is effective. Okay. Um, and then, number three, yung number three naman dito, so, this is a cat. So, nag pinagranulate muna. So, you can allow the the wound to have a healthy granulation bed, granulation tissue. And then, once you are able to close it, then, you can close it with sutures. So this one, this is very important kasi, of course, with this leg, so number three, um, very limited yung skin or tissues to close. Okay, so you can actually do your number three in those areas. But of course, you can do um, skin graft if you can. Alright, so, i-detail na lang natin. So, interesting. Sugar, betadine, and nut, if you're on, paano siya ginamit? Actually, we just, um, bumuha lang kami ng one tablespoon of sugar. Just white sugar. Table sugar would be okay. Tapos, yung betadine, just enough, okay, to create a paste. So, just enough para madissolve ng kaunti yung sugar and then to create a paste. And then, nilagyan ng nitrofurazone. So, yung nitrofurazone, medyo kahit pa paano meron siyang liquid. So, yung yung area became, or yung solution became tasty. Hindi siya dapat runny eh. So, kasi kung runny, matatanggal siya ng mabilis. So, you want that na medyo tasty. And then, you put it on a sterile bandage. And then, you cover the wound. So, ang idea doon daw, ang idea doon, which is, I agree also, when we go back to microbiology, ang unang kasing imadadigest ng bacteria would be the sugars. So, the, the bacteria would then leave the body tissues kasi the tissues will be proteins. Okay, so una nang idadigest yung sugars and during that time, um, masasira na yung cell niya because of uh, the betadine and also because of the antibiotics na itifurazone there. So, namamatay na rin yung bacteria. So, what happens is that you you clean off or you remove the bacteria contaminating that wound. So, hindi niya na i-digest yung proteins, yung sugat mismo. So, yung sugar na divert na siya doon. It's very effective. I, I've seen that. So, dun sa father ko, kasi so sharing na to. Dun sa father ko, so meron siyang bed sore. So, mga three days lang din siyang nilagyan ng ganun. Then, on the fifth day, so they decided to close it. Um, Nag-suture na sila. So, third intention na siya. And then, it healed good. Walang, walang infection afterwards. Yes, yeah, so you have to clean and replace the mandage every day. And as much as possible, sterile. So, mas maganda sterile. 
Ang um, problema lang natin ngayon is that nitrofurazone is not not so um sabi natin uh, uh, available in the drugstore. So mas ginagamit pa rin siya actually sa equine. Yes, sa equine. Sa madaming gumagamit sa equine practice. So diyan din ako nagpapabili actually for for the BTH use. Yan. Now, so aside from do you suture or not? Okay. So you also would like to ask do we do do we do bandaging? So the bandaging is important because it obliterates dead space, it reduces hematoma and edema, it protects against trauma and contamination, it absorbs the extra date, it minimizes sus motion, and it is also a vehicle for drugs. Okay, so so those um reasons kung bakit ka gagamit ng bandage, dapat mamit kung bakit kailangan, kung bakit ka gagamit ng gagamit. Um, Alright, now, aside from bandaging, okay, because that's a very common thing that we do, we also do the drainage, okay? And the drainage is also to obliterate dead space. Very important would be the removal of collected fluid or gas, especially in, in wounds that are filling up with fluid or gas. So, examples would be your um, hygroma, elbow hygroma. Examples also would be if you perform thoracic surgery. So, pwede mag-collect ang fluid and or gas there. Okay? And if you are uh, to prevent anticipated accumulation of fluid and gas. And that's also for um, kung gumawa ka rin ng, ng um, surgical repair of diaphragmatic hernia. So, you are anticipating accumulation of fluid and or gas into the thoracic cavity. Okay. So, it can perform either by vacuum or gravity. So, the most common that we use okay, is the Penrose drain. So, yung nasa taas na picture. And then the other one, yung nasa baba, is the Jackson Pratt drain. Okay. So, most commonly, yung, yung Penrose and then the other one is the Jackson Pratt. So, masaya, masaya ang gamitin yung Jackson Pratt pants. Okay, so your passive drains, the Penrose drains, work by capillary action. So it works by gravity, overflow, of overflowing fluid, and or fluctuations of pressure gradients. So para nagka fluctuate yung radiation pre, pa, you, pressure gradient because of the movement of the animal. So nang move, move, move siya just as the fluid goes out. Okay, now, um, as a rule, okay, mas okay daw that the Penrose drain okay, should exit through a single stab wound or stab incision away from the primary site. So, yun yung primary site mo where in, you have your sutures, your, um, your Penrose drain should be away from the uh, primary site. And then the dorsal end should be buried in the wound okay, or secured with a single suture that penetrates the skin and is tied externally. So, you do not suture that inside. So, you, should, you can suture that from the outside, pero you have to be very careful kasi baka mamaya pwedeng friable or maiwan yung portion uh, during the process of healing. Tapos pagtanggal mo, for example, ay may iwan. So you have to uh, look for it again. Okay? Now, um, the other recommendation is that yung dorsal end should be buried in, in the wound. Okay? Uh, hindi na rin recommend yung dalawang naka- kalabas yung dorsal and the ventral kasi hindi daw naman nakaka sabi natin na walang added advantage okay according to studies okay so yung A picture dito is um dapat okay when you create or when you put your uh, pen rose train you must also put in occlusive bandages okay so kailangan mo ng bandage to keep that in place and to absorb the drainage, to absorb the fluid. Why? Because the letter B is that yung area na yan is where the fluids went. And yung fluids na nandyan would cause additional irritation to the skin. And especially if it was infected, then kakalat ng infection. So, very important that you put in bandage okay, to absorb the drainage and to prevent that fluid from contaminating the skin further. And then number 
yung pangatlong picture, letter C, pero walang C. Okay, so yung um, dorsal end, okay, should be buried. So, according to studies, you can check it sa, um, nagimutan ito kung saan. Okay, but then, there's a an article um, regarding that. And it doesn't add up. And also, it can uh, also cause for an additional area for contamination. Okay. Then, the next one would be the active drain. Okay, so yung active drain, example would be your um, Jackson Pratt. So these are flow systems that collect fluid into a reservoir and prevent saturation of the bandaged material kasi napupunta na siya into a closed system. So for this picture, um, so yung letter A is um, paano ba yan? Um, ano lang siya? Uh, ginawa lang siya. So a syringe connected to a tubing tapos dyan na ko collect yung fluid. Versus yung katabi niya, which is on the left side, would be your Jackson Pratt. Okay, so, and then there is the decreased risk of ascending infection. Okay, kasi closed system nga siya. And, of course, it also limits exposure of hospital staff or other patients to contaminated fluid. So, versus yung, yung Penrose natin, so this one will prevent contamination of the animal and of the staff. Okay, kasi nasa closed system siya. So, how do we put this? Um, so, first, ano muna yung parts? You have the grenade, which is the, the suction um, container. So, na dyan na pupunta yung fluid. You also have the port for the drain. Okay, so, dyan papasok. Um, the non-fenestrated tubing and the fenestrated end plus your evacuation port. So, yung fenestrated end goes into the wound. Siya yung mapupunta dun sa cavity kung saan man yun. Okay, where there is fluid accumulation and um, it exits. So, letter A, para kang gumagawa ng esophagostomy. Okay, so you, you are to create a small incision wound, a small stab wound for the tubing okay, to pass through. So, A, B, C, D. Okay, sa D, yung, yung tubing is grasped by your uh, mosquito forceps. So, lalabas siya papunta sa incision or sa stab wound and then your fenestrated end is left within that wound so letter F siya okay and then your tubing is kept in place using your um, um, first string suture and then your Chinese finger trap suture pattern okay so, yung fenestrated ends would stay inside the wound and iko-close mo siya together with the wound. So, it should create um, vacuum. Okay, dapat closed yun siya. So, yung letter A sa baba, okay. So, bago mo actually isaksak yung tubing, okay, to test that, you are to deflate the tube. Tapos, isaksak mo siya, sorry, deflate yung grenade and then isaksak mo siya dun sa tube. So, it should create a suction uh, or a negative pressure, okay, and continuously it will suction out the fluid. So yung B sa baba would be your grenade being filled up with fluid. Okay. So once na napuno na siya, of course, wala nang negative pressure, then you can just remove the fluid that is accumulated into that grenade and then deflate it again. So meron ulit siyang negative pressure so that it can continually um, uh, drain out the fluid. So, yung tubing, you can actually uh, shorten that. Pwede mo naman siyang putulin, yung rubber tubing, to fit kung hanggang saan lang siya. Because if it's too long, then baka lang matanggal accidentally kasi mas may access yung animal. And if it's too short, baka hindi naman mo mailagay na maayos or ma-secure ma sa animal. Okay? So, there is this bandage to keep it um, covered. And then, meron dito... Um, Clip, okay, to keep it close or open if needed. Okay, so this is a picture on the right. Okay, it will show na in aspirate yung fluid that was drained into the grenade. Okay, you can also do improvised drains. So you can actually make use of your large syringe and then attach it to a tubing. So pwede na yung butterfly uh, needle, yung tube nun, yung plastic tube. 
and then just secured in place to keep the negative pressure. Pwede mo nga secure. This is a hairpin. So, tagalog niya hairpin. Basta yun. Tapos, in another picture, so yung A on your right, okay, that is actually a vacutainer. So, nakakabit siya sa, sa butterfly needle that is attached to the body of the animal where they, there is fluid accumulation. Okay, don't forget that a thoracostomy tube is also an active drain. Okay, so to prevent accumulation of fluid and or air, okay, especially in surgical procedures of the thorax and surgical procedures involving the diaphragm. And of some abdominal procedures that would entail um, incision or pag nagkaroon ng access into the thoracic cavity. Okay, so your dressings, okay. Um, so the type of dressings that you can use, can you use sugar, can you use honey, okay, pwede siyang gamitin. There's also um, the use of um, some bandages or some um, materials that, that keep the wound moist, okay. So if it's moist, if it's clean, if it's moist, then there would be a quicker and faster um, contraction of the wound because of uh, the migration of your keratinocytes. So, pwede rin nalagyan ng vacuum. Okay, naka-vacuum siya. Okay, because we want to make the wound, yung letter A, na sa right ninyo, to become a letter B. Okay, so mabilis siyang mag-heal. Now, there are different types of material that can be placed on the wound. So, you have your synthetics. Okay, we you have your bio-derived materials. So, so, these are some... some um, general materials that can be used, okay? But, pinaka-common pa rin natin nilalagay would be, of course, when we have wounds, nilalagay natin ng ointments, we have creams, okay? Um, in some cases, pwede gumamit ng mga synthetic materials such as your polymer films, your bioactive glass, so mamaya, kita natin yan. Okay? We also have your traditional therapies, your phytogenics, okay, yung mga plant materials such as your aloe vera, yung mga gumagamit ng turmeric, of course, guava is still there, so, I'm sure may iba sa inyo. Langgasin po natin ng, ng pinagpakulaan sa bayabas. Wala pong problema. Okay? And then, we also have wound cleaners. Your wound cleaners can be your hydrogen peroxide. But then, be very careful. If there's already granulation bed, then you want to stay away from that because it will destroy your granulation tissue. Okay? Also, your betadine. So, yung, although this is still used in... Um, generally, yung betadine is actually... Um, um, good to use in fresh wounds pa. And then while there is already keratin or keratinocytes, pwedeng bawasan na rin yung use of that. So you also have the Dakin solution or you also have your um, commercially available uh, wound cleaners. And aside from that, you have ointments and creams. So kailangan din din natin alamin kung saan gagamitin yung ointment or cream. So saan gagamitin yung, yung cream? Sa dry wound ba or sa wet wound ba? Okay, and also the ointments. So, dry wound bar, so wet wound bar. So, usually the ointment is used on the dry wounds and the creams would be on the wet wounds. Kasi pag wet siya, tapos nalagyan mo ointment, which is oil-based, hindi siya mag-mix. Okay? Wala, hihiwalay lang din siya. So, so, yung wet wounds, you can use the cream. So, para i-cover niya yung area. For the dry wounds, ointment. Now, we also have hydrogels, collagenase, alginates, foam dressings, and this as um, wound dressings. So, commonly being used is honey. Yung iba gumagamit pa ng manuka honey. But I don't think there is a uh, greater advantage in using manuka honey. Pero if it's pure honey, wag lang yung adulterated na kumari honey, tapos sugar, syrup lang naman pala din. So, so alam yan ng mga take talaga ng or honey. Okay, so alginate dressing um, can be used um, to to make the healing faster. Okay, we also have the uh, closed pulse irrigation, so localized hydrotherapy or pulsatile pressurized stream of normal saline. So it can be combined with pressurized irrigation in ultrasound. So the ultrasound will help para create ng, ng heat and then wound healing as well. Okay. So, a migration of your um, 
uh, of your um, inflammatory cells into that area. Your negative pressure would be helpful also to, to help in the contraction of the wound. So those, those vacuum assistant closure, mga negative to negative 50 to negative um, 175 um, millimeter mercury of pressure. Um, Alright, so ang usual na ginagamit na din, I'm, I'm not sure kung nakagamit na yung iba, pero it's, it has become um, common okay, recently, yung bioactive glass. So you borate bioactive glass, borate base, biological glass. Okay, so it mimics um, your fibrin, uh, fibrin clap. Um, it provides a scaffolding for cellular proliferation and cellular differentiation and tissue infiltration. Okay, so it promotes angiogenesis of the formation of blood vessels. It activates gene expression during proliferative phase for wound healing. And it expedites granulation tissue formation. Okay, so pinapabilis niya yung, yung wound healing. Okay, so kagaya nga lang nabagit ko, it, it mimics your fibrin. Okay, the fibrin is actually very important in, in, uh, uh, in inflammatory in the first phase kasi siya yung nag cause para maging scaffold for wound healing. Alright, so the bioactive glass would look like um, cotton candy. Okay, so it gets absorbed. Okay, it is very magaldisyang gamitin because it conforms to any shape. And it also provides thermal insulation. Okay, and it also absorbs wound exudate. So, Pag may basa basa it would absorb it. And it gets absorbed. Okay. Okay. Other than that, you can also use um, stem cells. So, meron na rin gumagamit niyan. Stem cells, so bone marrow, um, pwede yung gamitin. So, unan yung mga topoetic mesenchymal cells, okay, are capable of differentiating into cells of numerous tissue lineages. Okay, so, pwede siya for, um, for wound healing because it has angiogenic factors okay it has growth factors so vascular and the growth factors in basic fibroblast growth factors so itong case na to um for a rehabilitation of the limbs of the dog okay before a prosthetic placement so nag harvest sila ng bone marrow from the tibial uh, medullar cavity and then process to have the mononuclear cells and then in injected into dermally and applied topi topically on the uh, wound and um, so yung application is a picture on the top right and then once it healed ito na siya sa bottom left picture so aside from that um, of course it increases angiogenesis granulation tissue and collagen formation, which is very important for wound healing. Aside from those uh, mentioned, amniotic membrane and intestinal mucosa are being used for uh, wound healing. Okay, so it acts as a scaffold. Intestinal mucosa and then amniotic membrane. So, yung mga bagong panganak na aso, baka pwedeng i-harvest. But then, of course, um, compose kasi siya ng collagen. Ano? So, Collagen, glycosaminoglycans, fibronectins, fibro factors, which are very important for wound healing as well. So, ito, sa taas would be your amniotic, and then yung below would be the intestinal mucosa uh, membranes. So, from day 7, okay, and then day 56. So, yung wound healing niya would be very, very uh, dramatic. So there's collagen formation in both cases, okay? So very rich in collagen, okay? you histology, yeah. And then you also have the fibrin glue, okay? So the fibrin glue, okay, is it aids in hemostasis. It is um, very important for graft adherence and take. So para didikit ngayon yung skin graft mo, especially in distal parts of the Limb kasi medyo kulang yung skin doon. It has an antibacterial action, promotes cellular migration, and then of course delivery system for culture cells as well. 
and for growth factors. Plus, it stimulates vascular endothelial growth factor and fibroblast growth factor. So, your VG, EGF and FGF. So, aside from that, you also have your hyaluronic acid. So, yung hyaluronic acid is actually, um, hindi na siya ganun kabago, pero there are different types of um, hyaluronic acid that's being used. So, meron tayong yung um, cross-link hyaluronic acid that is um, more uh, superior daw versus the the polymer lang. So, glycosaminoglycans, it is um, part of the extracellular matrix and this contains tissue integrity. So, I'm sure you have used hyaluronic acid in um, tagneto, in ocular ocular uh, injuries, ano, pero this can also be used in skin conditions. Okay. So, it enhance, enhances granulation, angiogenesis, and creatinocyte formation and migration. So, uh, at the same time, it's non-immunogenic, so hindi siya nagkakos ng inflammatory uh, mechanism. Uh, yung pang face, Doc Trace, ano yun? Pang face? Pang face na hyaluronic acid? Ah, okay. Siguro yun nga yun. Um, you have to be very careful when it comes to the use kasi baka mamaya, that is intended for the topical lung. Okay? And not for an actual wound. Okay? So, sometimes you have to be very careful also with the ingredients. So, meron kasi mga nakalagay doon na, for example, if it's topical only or it can be used exactly on the wound. Alright, so these are cases na nilagyan ng um, hyaluronic acid. So from, from the first picture sa taas would be traumatic wound. Okay, bite wound yata ito. I think bite wound. So from day zero and then assessment and the bride man. Uh, third picture from the left. Until it healed on day 62. So ang nilagay lang nila, well aside from the regular antibiotic treatment of course, um, regular antibiotic treatment. So, naglagay din sila ng hyaluronic acid and it helped in the healing of these type of wounds. So, yung picture sa baba, the um, accident, okay? So, regular accident, tapos with that big wound, letter B sa baba would be after the bridement and then C would be granulation at day 7. So, ang bilis. And then day 75 is a um, um, fully healed wound. Now, of course, the next question is concept of antibiotic use. But of course, for wounds, we give antibiotics. Um, but there would be different types of wounds as well. So, may mga wounds na matagal na nag antibiotic treatment, but it doesn't really work. Or there are different types of wounds na pwedeng contaminated by, by fecal material or by any other uh, reason uh, kasama siya sa mga iba pang klase ng condition. Okay. So, anyway, when we give antibiotics, we think of it as a prophylactic treatment. So, nagbibigay ba tao before contamination occurs? And this is usually done for surgical procedures. Or, do you give it as a therapy when infection is already present? Now, usually, or ideally, it is based on culture and susceptibility testing. Okay. And then, we also give antibiotics based on empiric therapy. So, nagbigay ng treatment based on expected contaminants. Okay. So, when you perform, for example, um, um, intestinal procedures, then you are to expect these contaminants as well. So, ito yung mga expect nating contaminants. So, from the skin, most commonly would be Staphylococcus aureus and intermediates. Nobrisis would be your E. coli and your anaerobes. Okay, your gastrointestinal tract would be your coxa, your basila, and your anaerobes as well. And then your airway would be your staphylococcus species and your E. coli as well. And then for urogenital, streptococcus and E. coli. So these are your, your expected bacteria on the targeted tissue. Okay, so, so when we are um, doing surgical procedures, so ito yung most commonly ginagamit natin for your perioperative prophylactic drugs. Okay, so most common be cefazolin. Okay, iba gumagamit pa na, na 
ampicillin, okay, uh, penicillin. So, it's okay as long as tama ba yung paggamit natin of the antibiotics. Now, if it's a wound na matagal na nga nang heal then best to to use yung mga common antibiotics that are to target your skin contaminants. But then, best to do your um, culture so that you would know kung may iba pa ba ang contaminants na nandun. Kasi then again, dogs, pwede kasi makontaminate din siya ng other bacteria, okay? That would be from anywhere. Okay? So, from your actual wound management, then of course, you need to monitor. So, nagawa na natin yung procedure, nagawa na natin yung yung whatever needs to be done and then nagbigay na tayo ng antibiotics so monitoring is very important okay monitoring of the progress okay and of course do natin makikita if the client is um paano ba responsible enough or compliant enough um, kasi do natin din pwedeng i-recommend na kung hindi po talaga kayang gawin then we can recommend that baka pwedeng i-confine na lang natin so that we can do this for you Okay, so do natin siya makikita. And of course, if there would be changes or if there would be non-healing, then do din natin gagawin na mag assess of the uh, patient condition and of course the wound condition. Because wound management is more than just applying and dressing. It is a holistic approach. And with that, thank you very much. So I think I'm open for questions. How about yung mga ano, patients na may diabetes? Alright. Uh, for diabetic patients, okay. number one kasi kailangan i-control muna talaga yung sugar. Okay? So, number one, control yung diabetes. Kasi pag hindi talaga na-control yung diabetes, then hindi talaga siya mag heal Okay? Um, yung inflammatory is inside. Now, of course, you have to check also, ano ba yung nagpukos? Yung pag may sugat na siya, sige, may sugat na siya. Diabetic din yung patient. So, what's causing the wound? And if makakagawa ng, ng culture, kung, di, kung, kung magagawa yung culture, it's actually best. Para lang alam natin kung ano yung tatargetin natin. Ngayon, kung di makakagawa ng culture, best guess, ano yung pwede natin ibigay ng antibiotics that can be safe for this animal? Um, if it's skin infection, then pwede pa naman siguro tayo mag, mag amoxicillin, cephalexin, coamoxiclab initially. Unless, of course, there's no, it's not really healing, um, then we really recommend na mag, sige, magbigay tayo ng combination pa. Or, gaya nga nun, balik tayo. Best to do the culture, kung kaya din naman. And then, of course, monitor and monitor and monitor the sugar. Kasi kung hindi naman ma-address yung blood sugar, then it will not heal. Hindi talaga siya mag heal Doc, may question po ako. Yes, pa. Oo. Um, yun kasi, Doc, tulad ng mga cases na meron ka dyan, Doc, yung sa may limb area, pwede din ba yung technique na sinabi mo kanina, yung sugar, betadine, at saka yung uh, nitrofurazone na gamitin? Or dun lang dapat siya specifically dun sa mga maliliit na sugat? Okay. Um, pwede naman siya sa big wounds. Okay. Pwede siya sa big wounds. But you have to consider also na kasi sugar yun, eh, baka lang gamin. So, isa yun sa mga binabantayan namin, baka lang gamin ko yung pasyente. Ah. So, so, kailangan well-managed yung, yung area kung nasaan siya. But you can use those um, those combinations sa malalaking sugar. Okay. Pwede naman siyang gamitin. Hey, Doc, thank you po. Welcome. Nakatrya niyo na po ba yung, ano, yung sudago na product sa wound? Ay, ay wait. Uh, ano yung laman nun? Specifically. Parang di ko kasi alam kung nagamit ko na siya. Para siyang serum, Dok. Sudago, no? 
Wait, ano naman yan? Stem cell. Okay, di pa. Hindi pa ako nakagamit ng stem cell using the sodago. Though, gumamit ako ng stem cell for a different condition. So, it was actually a, a stem cell na, ano ba to? Uh, hinarvest from the animal itself. Tapos, for neurologic condition kasi nagkaroon siya ng spinal injury. Pero, for the sodago, hindi pa. Yung hyaluronic acid, Doc, ito din sim yung nilalagay sa joints? Hmm, okay. Um, yung nilalagay sa joint, I think pwede rin siyang gamitin sa sugat. Wala namang problema kasi you also give that internally. So, the hyaluronic acid is very important kasi it acts as a, a scaffold. Wala pong problema. So, yung anything that can be given or can be injected can actually be placed on on the wound in itself. Although meron naman mga available na hyaluronic acid for uh, for the wound in itself. Hindi ko alam, pwede ba magbanggit ng brand? <laughs> uh, um, si, magbabanggit na ako ng brand. Hindi naman to, ano. Si Rimen. Okay. So, by Bayer, but now, by ilang ko. So, meron sila for the skin in itself. Meron din sila for the eye. But also for the for the eye, merong oh, wala daw stock. But for also for the for humans, meron din tayong ginagamit na for the eye which is uh, hyaluronic acid din. Um I forgot the name. Basta 'yon. Sulfosamil. Hyalid ata daw. Hyalid 'yon, hyalid, especially for the eye. Yes. How about yung ano daw, uh, PRP? PRP, platelet-rich plasma. So, it's also um, nice. Although, hindi ko pa siya talaga nagamit. Ay, gusto ko siyang gamitin, actually. Kasi, ang sabi nila, na-introduce na yun way back, eh, parang 2009, that you can actually harvest the blood. And then, may nalagay lang doon. Tapos, na, na, doon sa blood. Tapos, i-spin siya so that you'll be able to harvest the platelet. And the platelet is actually very rich in, in, um, pro in, sabi natin, uh, healing. Meron siyang pre-produce, meron siyang um, nilalabas sa platelets in itself, platelets, para mag-heal. So, very important yun siya. Doc, may tanong po ako. Uh, meron kasi kaming case before. Um, may malaki din siyang sugat dun sa katawan niya. Tapos, ang ginawa namin is naggawa kami ng skin drafting. Um, ano yun, Doc? Kailangan ba i-treat yung hinarvest na skin or pwedeng itapal na lang siya kaagad dun sa area? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Paano i-treat? I-antibiotics mo din siya? Oo. Oh, oh. Parang ganun, Doc. Sort of. Kung okay. baka, baka, baka contaminated siya, ganun, kaya mag mm -hmm. kailangan hugasan siya ng antibiotic. Parang ganun, Doc. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, depends on the type of harvesting, yung technique mismo ng pag-skin graft. Kasi meron tayo mga direct na skin graft na na eh, minumove lang yung skin from one area to another. Okay, minumove mo yung skin, nag-graft ka. Or there would be cases flaps. na parang... Flaps. We call it flaps. Yeah, you yeah. do flaps. Yes, you do flaps. Tapos meron din graft na ginagawa na kinukuha yung skin from another area. Tapos nilagyan siya ng guri-guri, which is yung pinakita sa picture. Um... And then, itinatapal siya directly doon sa wound. I think it would be okay also to put in antibiotics kasi that is still the skin. And your skin, kahit sabihin mo na na you prepare that aseptically, it can also be prone to uh, contaminate, contamination or contaminants. Yeah, Tapos sugat pa rin siya eh. Yes. Yung, sa, yung sa flaps, oh sorry, sa uh, grafting, you have to be very careful about that because... Uh, If we're not aware and uh, sure about the process, we might be introducing more harm than good. I agree with... Uh, kanina may nagtanong about uh, Sodago. We've been using Sodago for quite some time. We have mixed uh, reactions or mixed uh, um, reviews about it from the vets, from our vets. Some of them are... Some, don't, some of them, they like it. Some, for, some pay, for some of our patients, it worked. For some, parang medyo mabagal eh. And, Uh, if we're going to quantify or, or uh, review, you know, review it uh, with with the price itself, medyo mahal siya eh. 
Uh, kaya, you know, medyo mixed reactions. For, for some clinics, they they would readily use it post-op. But I don't know if you, if to, medyo nalit ako sa lecture, I don't know if you've touched uh, laser therapy with uh, wound healing and wound treatment. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. So, in our ex- right now, we're just implementing that in the clinic pero you know maybe in the next future we'll have i i, I can prepare a lecture a, 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 um, a talk <laughs> regarding that on baka ano but excellent lecture thank you very much thank you doc actually very important nga yun magandang topic po yung sa laser kasi ginagamit nga dito talaga siya actually for humans ginagamit siya and then na introduce na rin siya dito sa Philippines for veterinary use so Tsaka medyo marami na din doc na gumagamit na clinic ngayon. Naabutan ko yung ano, I, I uh, was able to catch your lecture about the drainage and I saw a uh, drain yes, na sir. nakataas siya din, Penrose drain that was at, I'm na, hindi ko masyado naabutan, medyo late akong nakapasok yun. Apologize for that. But uh, what I know is that when you put a drain, it has to Uh, well, by by definition, it should drain by gravity. You know? So it should be attached. Yung hole should be should uh, follow gravity. You know? So kung saan yes. pababa yung ano yung fluids, doon din siya uh, papunta. So we do not use uh, Penrose drain, and then it will end up pataas kasi para it will defeat the purpose. Yes. Well, ag- well, agree with what you said that we have to put a bandage also. In order to eliminate that space and thereby weaking the fluids inside, uh, for to reduce the accumulation, because most of them are also bacterial, uh, may contamination by bacteria. Um, ayun. So may nakita lang ako. I don't know if that was uh, related to your lecture. You may nasa taas yung butas. Ah, yes, uh, yun yung... Instead of pababa. Ano yung dok yun yung mga errors? Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yes, so yeah, dapat yeah, yeah. hindi siya ginagawa. Pataas. Yung Hindi picture, dapat pataas. Yes, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yung picture na yun is one of the errors kasi the dorsal portion should be covered. Hindi siya dapat nakalabas. So yung ventral dapat pababalan talaga siya. Yeah, so, so dapat sa baba tayo nagbutas and then doon mag-drain yung ano ba? Yes. That is assuming that the dog is upright. No? <laughs> However, yes, yes. If, you, if, if, if the dog is lethargic and you know, uh, medyo uh, medyo no, lagi nakahiga, then you know, it's irrelevant. <laughs> But Magalang then again, you're assuming that the dog will stand. Uh, Doon pa rin tayo sa upright position. Yeah. Now, did you touch on ano, the cubitus ulcers? Uh, so, uh, I know. I did not. Di na po. Oh, so, okay, okay. So maybe for your next lecture. Ah, iba na. Iba na. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, uh, ano, interesting uh, notes. Uh, well prepared and very good. <laughs> Ibang member naman yun. Ito, Doc, may tanong si Doc. Um, uh-huh. Yung amniotic membrane, na-try nyo na po ba? If, uh, and pwede po ba yung sa mga puppies na, na, na CS? Alright. Um, ang alam ko kasi, when it comes to especially the amniotic and then the the intestinal mucosa, okay, hindi kasi, alam ko hindi siya pwede kasi, do joke lang yung kanina na pag nanganak, kukunin mo. Okay, hindi siya diretsong ilalagay. Okay. It should still undergo a processing. Okay, so, pero yes, the amniotic membrane or the amniotic membrane from the dog na, na CS, for example, um, pwede siyang i-harvest, but then it should still undergo a process. May napulot ako today regarding your lecture, your, your ano, you, what you shared about the betadine and the sugar and the, no, that's very good. Thank you very much for that. I also learned in one of uh, my uh, uh, MD friends that what they use in cleaning is a portion of a mixture of Clorox. These are ano, ah, physicians. They're physicians. No? Um, Clorox and water. So that's what they use. In cleaning the wounds uh, for for elderly with decubitus ulcers, mm. um, I know we've I know I'm sure you've had patients already also that uh, that has been 
you know, recumbent for long for a long for a long period of time and maybe developing the cubitus ulcers also. We've tried that in our clinic. I I just uh, don't have the mixture with me. Uh, but it we did that a couple of years ago, I think, and uh, it worked, naman. Um, but maybe I can share that uh, next. Uh, let me let me just uh, I will get that information. But thank you for sharing that betadine and sugar and uh, nitrofurazone uh, combination as paste in apply, in applying um, or, or dressing wounds. Welcome, Doc. So, Doc, you have Actually, just to okay. know, comment lang din, Doc, yung nasa concentration or the dilution. Uh, most references would say well, like 1 is to 9. Pero like um, sometimes, I think, sa the VTH, we use like 50 ml per uh, 500 ata yun or uh, 1,000 lit, uh, 1,000 ml ng NSS. We usually use, combine it with NSS, Doc, rather than... Um, uh, distilled water for most cases pero i'm not so sure lang then if okay lang kung kung ibang uh sol ano to solution yung gagamitin is but this for the chlorine or for the water yes, doc. nitrofurazone yes, doc, for, for the, the chlorine the chlorine, chlorine. and the all right all nss right. Yeah. yes 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 okay thank you actually yun sa betadine ah sorry dun sa dun sa chlorine and nss Ano ko dyan, um, personal experience ko po yan. Kasi recently lang, um, nag-disgrace siya ako. So, the recommendation and the always recommendation from the from MDI, linis ng betadine. But then, hindi siya nag heal Tapos pa, pa, parang weird. So, I needed to do the, the, the Clorox and, the, well, the Clorox and the NSS. So, pero usually po, when I was able to talk with a an MD way back, kasi meron kaming patient sa kanya na nag kami. And then, nagkakaroon siya ng weird thing eh. So, ang pinalinis nila, kasi nagkakaroon ng infection dun sa skin, ay 5%. So, sabi niya, Doc, we usually do this sa, sa, ano, sa hospital. 5% of, ano, of, of zone rocks sa NSS. Tapos, if you want it na mas patapang, sige, you can go as as high as 10%. Wala namang problema. Ayan, so. Yun. Tapos, kung kailan siya... Sabagay, if you think about it, ay, sa mga pools, di ba? Chlorinated yung mga pools. O tapos, ang tapang pa, no? Ang sakit Ang tapang, di ba? May isa na, ano mo. And then, if you have wounds, magaling ka na after. <laughs> Actually, nakaka- nakakakinis siya. <laughs> Pag nagsiswimming ka rin, di Tapos kaya Doc Grace, um, alright, contaminated, pag contaminated na, usually we recommend sa VTH nung, nung solution na yon pag may suspension na kami na infected na to. So usually yun talaga na pinaglilimis namin. Okay. Okay na po. Okay na po. May mga, mga questions pa? Wala na po yata. Alright. So, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you po, Doc. Uh, napakalim- thank you very much, Doc. <laughs> thank you, po. Thank you Doc. Uh, sino na pong mag-share naman next meeting? Si Doc Ferds na. <laughs> Sabi ko ni, kaya yung magsalita, matuturo ako eh. <laughs> uh, uh, pa- pass muna, madami lang. Uh, we, we are, uh, it will be our 14th anniversary this year for Born, so everyone's really busy. So baka sa susunod, mga, mga two months pa from now, I will, ano, I will prepare something for you. I promise that. Okay po, Doc. Thank you. Um, Plaplag ko lang din yung mga hindi pa nakapag-register ng ano, sa BIPAP. Malapit na. Next week.
And then, yep, next year, may mga nakahilera din tayo yung mga na-invite ko ng gustong mag-share from uh, mga diplomate po, foreigner. Pero unahin natin yung mga members na mag-share. Yan po. Kung may mga questions lang po kayo, mag-email lang or yeah, uh, message nyo lang po kami. Yan po. I think that's, that's all for tonight. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.